Hello there, everyone. Uh, how's everything been going? I know I have not done these uh, Sunday sauces or devotionals uh, lately. Thought I'd come to you with with one. I was uh, just sitting in bed and and giving some thought to, to things and just uh, wanted to share uh, something that I read, something that I've uh, kind of thought about, and it uh, kind of hit home for me. Uh, so I thought maybe I'd share that and see if anything uh, kind of touches your heart, uh, that kind of thing. So just uh, hoping this is coming to you at a, at a good time. I hope it's uh, you're having either a good morning or afternoon or evening, whatever time you happen to see this video uh, come up. And um, so I've got, uh, I read a little article on it's godlines.org, so that's where I'll cite the, the reference for this. It's, uh, it's titled Extravagant Love. Uh, sorry if I'm a little stuffed up, but usually in the mornings I'm just a little stuffed. So, But anyway, so check it out if you'd like. Uh, you could probably Google guidelines.org, extravagant love devotional or whatever. And, and that's where I've got much of this message from. Um, so, very good little devotional. So, uh, with that being said, um, hope you, like I said, are having a good day. I'll get right into the meat of this. And uh, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe down below so other people might be able to hear this devotional. If you're not into this kind of thing, um, you're here for like a Dollar Tree haul or something like that, which is usually on this channel, then just go ahead and feel free to click away as well and, and come back. There'll be more Dollar Tree uh, things coming up and, and, and blogs and craft videos, things like that. So, all right. Well, um, this is the kind of the story of, it's out of Mark uh, 14, uh, basically 14, 4 through um, 9, let's say, roughly. They're kind of the setup. Um, uh, let's see here. You know, they were having a, you know, Mary, anyway, he was uh, giving a dinner party for Jesus, okay? There was a gentleman giving a dinner party for Jesus. Just days before Jesus would give his life on the cross. Now, we don't have the entire guest list, but we know that Lazarus and his sisters were there. Mary and Martha were also present, uh, with at least some of his disciples, and then including Judas as well. Now, all at once, when you went into this, this home, uh, all of a sudden you got this, this fragrance. I mean, the smell was just all over the room. They recognized it was nard, which is a costly perfume from India. This would be like filling a whole room with a perfume. Now, we're not talking candles. We're talking a perfume that's very, very, very expensive. And that's what everybody smelled when they came into this room. It was just like, whoa, this is a, this is a expensive smelling perfume that is being used. Uh, it's Miriam Mar um, so once they noticed that, Mary was liberally anointing Jesus' head and feet with a scent that cost a year's wages. An extravagant gift. Can you imagine a year's worth of wages that you're spending on, on something for God? And at this point, it's, it's right for Jesus. And it's a smell, but it's not, you know, something tangible per se. Um, but just rubbing, you know, Jesus is worth a year's worth of wages. I mean, think of that in your own life. Excuse me, I had a little bit of coffee this morning. I don't have some coffee too often, but it tastes pretty good. So, here's Mary liberally applying this to Jesus' head, his feet, and it's like a set of years' wages. It's an extravagant gift. Uh, of course, good old Judas, uh, he criticized her and said, and this is in Mark 14, 4-5, why this waste of perfume? 
it could have been sold and the money given to the poor. And then uh, in there, John tells us he didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because as treasurer, he used to help himself with what was put into the money bag. But Jesus uh, turned around and, and kind of commended this extravagant gift that he was giving. And he kind of rebukes Judas here. This is Mark uh, 14, 6 through 9. He says, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare my burial. I'll tell you the truth. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Well, I guess Jesus was telling it like it is. It's just what we're doing. We're telling it now as well. So Jesus, you know, said, you know, it's okay. So, um, you see, Mary went beyond obedience. You know, there's a, you can be obedient to God, but she also went to the point of being extravagant, uh, you know, obedience, I believe. This is an extravagance, a gift for God. For her heart, she poured out costly gift that came a memorial for her love for centuries to come. And we cannot give any God anything that he wants or needs. We just can't. Um, you know, he owns everything already. I'm talking about physical things. Okay? Yeah, but we can't give him something he wants. And that is our love for our hearts. Have you given something extravagant simply because you love him so much? Or is it something just to think about? Um, you know, I was reading now like, boy, have I given God anything extravagant once? I mean, uh, it's hard enough a lot of times when you're at church just to give that tithe, which is like 10%, you know, typically for most people. I mean... And that's a good thing. That's not, you know, that is is a good thing. This person went and put a year's worth of wages on Jesus' head and, and that with this perfume. Just extravagant. And it was from her heart, which I think, you know, it mentions that in there. From the heart, which I think is very important. Uh, not to do it out of... Just a, a raw obedience. Say, well, I did this. Uh, I did this extravagant gift. It's got to come from your heart. Okay? Just right from your heart. Um, so just think about that. What kind of uh, extravagant gift could you give God? And, it, and the, it's not a guideline of a year's wages. It's just what in your heart can you extravagantly give to Him? Is it just sending people you know or don't know, uh, you know, some uh, some mail, uh, a, a Christmas card, you know, maybe a Christmas card with a, a gift in it or a letter, letter of encouragement or something like that, um, and, and sending out many of them, sending out, uh, you know, people that you know that might need some encouragement. So I really do like uh, th this idea of of extravagant gifts for God. It's a wonderful idea that has to come from the heart. I haven't figured out what I personally am going to do yet because I'm still searching my heart to figure out what that extravagant gift looks like for me. You know, so um, it could be uh, just if uh, one thing that if you don't know God right now and you're still watching this, uh, the most extravagant gift that Jesus would like would be your heart. You know, he, he would like you to to become a follower of, of Jesus and, and to be saved. Uh, that's the the best, most extravagant gift that he could have, and and we could have as well, obviously for eternal life with with him. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, just uh, ask God for forgiveness of your sins. You know, that you, you believe and accept that Jesus died on the cross for those sins. And that you want to 
be a part of his kingdom. And uh, the Holy Spirit will, will come into you and you will become a child of God. And from that point on, maybe maybe just seek out a little local church or just uh, look it up online. You know, nowadays there's churches online and things like that as well. And just read more of God's word and you'll find out that, um, you know, it's a, uh, he, he is a wonderful person that the extravagant gift that you gave of, of your life for him in service of him uh, was the best thing and he will be happier than ever so everyone I thank you for just kind of listening to me here um, hope uh, it was well received I, I know once in a while I stumble with my words but I I don't uh, make these up you know weeks ahead of time uh, and have them all polished it's uh, what comes from the heart uh, usually within an hour after I think about it. So I, I could take longer, I suppose, to, to be more eloquent with it, but uh, I like to do it when it's fresh in my heart or fresh in my mind. Uh, so once again, have a great week, everyone. I uh, hope everything is well with you and yours. And uh, try to do something extravagant for God. Have a wonderful day.